Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O-R-D hyphen Oracle dot com. He's got a great newsletter. That's Ord hyphen Oracle dot com. Tim Ord, what's going on, brother? Well, did you get all my charts? I have all your charts, man. I do. All right. Uh, uh, did you get I, I sent one kind of late. Yep, uh, I remember. have that one, okay, too. Okay, good. All right, um, we can start. At, we're going to look at the bigger picture again. Probably people are getting tired of looking at this, but you got to remember what the the promise of the big trend is, the bigger trend yes. is. And uh, the first chart is the summation index. We've gone over this yep. quite a few times. Uh, just a reminder is all it is. It'll be quick. We, uh, oh, no, boy, listen, we want to go over these. We want to go over these, period, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the top window is the summation index. And in a nutshell, you have to have a buying or a selling climax. Then within two months, you have to have a buying climax or thereabouts. And we had a selling climax on October 27th uh, of last year, so a couple, three months ago. We hit minus 800 and something. And we rallied to uh, plus 1,000 on December 27th. And previous times that happened, normally the next 12 months or even longer sometimes, that uh, promises a bull market. Uh, so that's just one indicator. Um, so in the chart two. That's, that's quite an indicator, though, right, Tim? I mean, you yeah. know, for long-term yeah. perspective, folks, okay, this is something you want to keep your head wrapped around, okay? Particularly in a market that we have, you know, uh, because it's a powerful market. Man. Okay, so I'm ready. I'm on number two now. Yes. Yeah, so so number one, so it, it has a real high probability. Matter of fact, the chart number one, that goes back to 2007. And every time it reached below minus 700 and rallied to plus 1,000, you know, the market had an uptrend, you know, sometimes three, four years. But, you know, promises a good 12 months next year looks, or this year, looks yes. pretty good. So for chart two, uh, it's kind of a review again. Uh, the bottom window is the... Uh, SPX VIX ratio. Okay. And um, and the top. This is a monthly time frame, I think. Um, yeah, this is a monthly time frame. And so the the top one or the top window is is the VIX. Next window down is the SPX, and the bottom window is the uh, SPX VIX ratio. Right. And normally, at tops, you get you get the SPs going higher, and the SPX VIX ratio going. And making lower highs as the bearish divergence, and right now we don't have a bearish divergence. We got both the SPX VIX ratio going higher highs and the uh, SPX uh, ratio uh, going higher oh, highs. Higher. Yep. So that bodes well for the intermediate term. So it looks good. I think there's a head and shoulders bottom going on. If it is, that would upside target around uh, 570, and that's approximately at least double digits higher than where we are right now. So not every week's going to be an up week, but right. uh, it looks promising. Yes. So we'll go to chart three, we're, and now we're going down to the smaller time frame. Okay. You look at the bigger time frames, and it all looks pretty good. So you go down to the smaller time frames, and this is a weekly chart of the, uh, the middle window is the SPX, SPX, and the window below that is the uh, SPX VIX ratio on a weekly time frame. Okay. Back at the uh, 2022 top, you got the SPs making higher highs. That's that kind of pink area. And the ratio making lower highs. Yeah. And now in the current time frame, you got the SPs making higher highs, and you got the ratios making higher highs. And, and so in midterm, it looks pretty good. Right. And, folks, remember this, okay? This program's archived. So if you happen to be in your car right now, driving to work, driving home, whatever, you know, as Tim gets some beautiful shots out here, so remember that you can just pick up the show anytime when you get home. But you want to look at this because it's so clear, you know, because Tim's been on now for seven or eight months, okay? And it's so clear that when you saw the ratio in July turning down versus what we have now, you can see, as Tim has explained, that the SPX is going higher. And the SPX VIX ratio is going higher, okay, which is so cool, Tim, man. This is kind of, this is really cool that on one shot you can see both the differences, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you go back and, 
And so yeah, I, I went back all the way as far as I could, you know, back 1980s, back to, you know. Yeah. And so this it, works over time. So let's, let's go to the next chart, chart number four. Okay. And uh, let's just kind of look at the short term here. And uh, this is, you know, this, does it need to be a real concern? Yeah, maybe. Uh, but right now, the, the bottom window is the uh, SPX, is the daily what's going on. So this narrows it all the way down to the chart. So the SP right now is going higher highs, and the, the ratio, which is the next window up, is actually making lower highs. Okay. So you got a little divergence here. Yep. And actually, uh, over time, I found out sometimes these divergences go away. And and so I'm kind of watching here. I I got long last week. I forget what day I got long. But anyway, I'm long the market still. Yes. I got long on uh, January 18th, so it was last week. And um, and so I, I see in the ratio making lower highs. But if you look today, you know, the market is up a, a smidge, barely. It's almost unchanged. But the VIX right now is making lower lows. So that buys me another day here. Of, of a chance that the S and P's uh, may make a higher high, and that ratio may get back to the previous high. Isn't that? Don't cool? know if it will or not, but if it does, that would buy me more time to the upside. So I'm thinking that's what's going to happen here. I think even though we got a daily divergence, yeah, uh, uh, that divergence may go away before the week is out. No, I don't can, know listen, if that'll I happen or not. I'll have to wait I bring and see. This, I bring this up and show them. You know, that VIX, folks, okay, is at 12.71 right now. So, and that, what's so cool about when you're, when you're listening to what Tim is saying here, it's really cool when you understand the ratios that he's talking about because it, it's going to buy him another day. That's what it really comes down to, which is, you know, you know what's so cool, Tim, is that you, cause yeah. as you project forward, it's like, okay, I see what's happening out here today. And, you know, you get Netflix yeah. coming out after the close, and, you know, with, I mean, we're in earnings season now, so there's, there's going to be a lot of numbers coming out for sure. Yeah, but that's uh, but you know it'd, it'd be so if tomorrow's down to say the SPs are flat up tomorrow again, say that's what it is. Yeah, or even down a little bit, and the VIX is down again, that would buy me another day. So right. I don't know. So we'll see. You know, maybe I'm out of this trade. You know, end of the week, maybe I'm not. But this, you know, this is how I'm looking at the market. So it's Tim um, Wood threading the needle, baby, threading that needle, yeah, Tim. <laughs> you stay yeah, right before, there. You know, before I always kind of get short on the trigger, you know, and and but really the money, the money's really made if you can catch a trend. And sometimes the trends are kind of hard to catch. But if you're patient and you kind of wait through it, uh, you know, trends where you make your money. At, no, you no. know, and this market may be trending here. I'm not sure if it's not. No, so, I get it. Um, Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now down 110. NASDAQ's up 45. He's up uh, 9.5. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim with Tom O'Brien, folks. We do appreciate your growling and problem with us out there. We have the Dow Industrials right now. Trading down 108, NASDAQ is up 46, S&P is up 9.5. Okay, Tim, where would you like me to go on these charts? All right, go, uh, go chart number five. Okay. And uh, uh, charts, this is another kind of a long-term chart. It goes back to looks like mid-2017, I think, or somewhere in there. But anyhow, the bottom window is the 10-day average of the trend. Yeah. Next one up is the 21-day average. And the third window up from the bottom to the 63-day average. Last week, all three of those, all three of those trend uh, time frames got in bullish territory. Wow. And what's important is the 63-day. Now, 63 days basically a month of trading. Yes. And when that turns bullish and needs only get above 1.10, you're looking at least an immediate term low. Um, you know, this is. A lot of times it can last, you know, a long time. The blue areas on the chart are all times when the the uh, six three day trend got above uh, one point two. So a trend reading above one point uh, or yeah one one point two shows panic in the market. And the more panic, the longer time you have panic in the market, usually the longer the rally phase. So when you get a trend reading on the six three day above one point one. It shows basically a whole month of panic, even though the market really didn't decline any, per se. It kind of went sideways, more or less. Uh, 
people were panicking, and panic is, is kind of the, the fuel for the market, I guess you might say. Yeah. Well, you don't have well, any panic at a bottom, it's never a bottom. When we're looking so at you the, want, I mean, this is quite a statistic. When we're looking at the 60 day, 63 day trend, I mean, that's three trade months. We average 21 trading days a month, right? So, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, you're right. Three days, yeah. Yeah. It's so, 21 days a month. Yeah, the six three days is basically three months. So you talk so, about climbing yeah, sorry, a wall of worry, man. People were worried the whole way up. Interesting, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. That's exactly what it said. They were they were worried uh, all the way up. You know, but for a while they got bullish. You know, last July at that top. Yep. You know, because the six three day trend was hovering around bearish levels. Uh, then the market went down. Then all of a sudden the market went up, and people got scared. <laughs> so. Wow. They sold it into the rally, that's and cool, um, that's yeah. bullish. Yep. Uh, exactly. So if you got the market going up and you got that trend going up at the same time, then uh, that rally is going to continue. Yep. I love so, that. Man. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyhow, this six, so this three months of of panic uh, is really a, a bode well for the for the year. You know, it kind of supports the uh, summation index. Uh, kind of supports uh, the. Um, yeah, you know, that's kind of I know what you're saying. You put this together so, well, man. We started off with that longer term. It, 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 there's no doubt that if you look at the last 63 days, folks, okay, that's climbing the wall of worry, whoever, you know, coined that term years ago. But that, that yeah, is Yeah, that was Joe Granville coined that term. What was it? Wow. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, Joe Gran Granville. Um, so... Uh, okay. But anyhow, yeah, you really want a wall of worry. If you got everybody agreeing with you with the market going up and the trends say a ten day trends down around point eight or even lower, yeah, that's usually a disaster for the market. Okay. So when he when he said the wall of worry, you know, I put it in terms where you could actually see it, right. and that's the trend reading exactly. So pretty cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's so when they say a wall worry now, you can actually go to an indicator and and look at it if there is indeed a wall worry instead of somebody and just say what it, you know. You can do a fact behind it, which is awesome. No, I love yeah, it. you can put yeah, you can put it on paper and look at it. So you know that we do have a wall worry here. So could this be a trend going? You know, that's a possibility. It's one of the reasons why I'm kind of pushing this trade a little bit. Right. You know, to see if the VIX does go to a lower low here in the next several days. Uh, but we got, you know, we got the 10 day, the 21 day, and a, and a three month uh, trend readings all in uh, bullish territory. Uh, so, and that's kind of a sign of a trend. So we'll see if that works out or not. Don't know if it will or not. But yeah. uh, we go to a chart six. Okay. Um, the actually the bottom window. We were talking. You and I were talking, and we were talking about the two day trend. Well, I keep a track of the two day trend. And and before it was always around four, and but that two day trend sometimes back in the, the 2008 decline, it was around five. You needed a, a two day trend around five to get a bottom going in. Okay. And 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 different markets. It's a slow changing indicator. Yes. It doesn't like doesn't switch from one day to the next. But right now we had a two day trend. Last week, matter of fact, the day of the low, we had a two day tra uh, two day trend of last week. Anyhow, the day of the low, which is January seventeenth, was three point five two. Right, I think it was. Yep. And so yeah, I drew a line across the deal, and actually around three point five really works better. I mean, four does work, but if you get it to three point five, which is one point seven five times two, and that also work. And I, that's the only reason I stayed out of that trade. Because we didn't have a two-day trend around four, it turns out if you go back over the last couple of years, uh, one point or, th or three point um, three point five works good. So nice. uh, just kind of want to point that out. And we'll have some two-day trends this year that work out to you know three point five or higher. If you see them, jump on them because the next day is usually up, nice. uh, and okay. and the next uh, several days is actually usually okay. up. Can we so, get into this metal chart? You know, but yeah, metal chart. There's two things going on here. Uh, here's the metal chart. This is the inflation deflation ratio on a yeah. on a d daily time frame. Uh, I've been waiting for this market to to go, but there's two charts I want to point out. Uh, this one gave another buy signal because the RS it's inflation deflation ratio on a daily time frame. Okay, it gave a we're in a buy signal right now because it's below thirty. 
And once it gets below 30 and turns up, it's usually a bicycle. And it got below 30 uh, yesterday, and it's turning up today, so probably yesterday was a low. So what does that mean on on an intermittent term scale? Well, we don't know, but turn to chart number eight. That's the reason why I'm going to put put it in here. I have it. Next, this next at some point to get this this chart bullish. You know, the the top window is a monthly cumulative up down volume for GDX. The bottom window is a monthly cumulative advanced decline for GDX. Right. To get these indic and these indicators when they trigger, they're multi year. And we've been, the last signal was generated in January of 2021, and it's been on a sell signal since, because both these indicators are going down. To get a buy signal, both those indicators need to be above the mid-Bollinger band. Right. And the, the blue lines show when it's happened, uh, it got above the mid-Bollinger band and stayed there, and the red lines are when it closed below the mid-Bollinger band. I thought a couple times over the last several months that we'd, we'd close above it. It was close enough, but the market didn't fall through. We GX, got so close, to get that I know. That's indicator. why I wanted to Both get them. them. We, we definitely Pardon. got close. Go we right there. Yep. Right. Okay. Cool. Right. Well, we need to close above the mid-Bollinger band yep. and hold above the mid-Bollinger band. And so far, that hasn't happened. Will this rally do it? I don't know. You know what's cool, Tim, is that the the, the chart before that, too, the inflation deflation, it's so intriguing because the gold stocks are actually moving today with the dollar up, and it's not that gold's up that much. I mean, it's it's going trading sideways, but the gold stocks themselves are moving, man. It's like, okay, we got a lot of green on the screen here in the gold stocks, so... Well, listen, Tim, it's great to be back with you. It's always a pleasure, and, you know, can't wait to... Uh, Talk to you again on uh, Thursday, man. All right. Love you guys. Love you, man. Thanks so much. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.